Hello everyone, welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series, a set of short talks about things to do with life in the universe and astrobiology that I hope you'll find interesting. So today I want to talk about this question, which is where there is water, there is life, or more to the point, the question, is it the case that where there's water, there's life? Now, if you look around you on the earth, you'll see life everywhere, uh, in the oceans, in streams and rivers, in ponds, everywhere where there seems to be liquid water, there seems to be life, biology of some kind. And that's a reasonable um, observation because it is true that in most environments on the earth that have liquid water, they also have all the other requirements for life and things can grow there. So life certainly requires liquid water, but it also requires other things as well, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus. But at a fair minimum, we think that uh, all known life, at least life that we know, uh, requires liquid water. And liquid water is of course the solvent of life. It's the material in which molecules can move around in a liquid state, come into contact with one another, carry out chemical reactions, and all that good, uh, all those good metabolic reactions and biochemical reactions necessary for a life form to grow and reproduce. And on the earth at least, most liquid water bodies like oceans or rivers also contain all these other molecules like carbon containing molecules and nitrogen. So wherever we find liquid water, we tend to find life. And you'll often hear planetary scientists when they're looking at other planetary bodies like Mars or icy moons, talk about following the water, follow the water, they sometimes say. And what that means is go and look for where the liquid water is or was, and then look for life there. And that's a reasonable proposition. As we said, liquid water is a minimum requirement for life. So if you find evidence for liquid water on another planetary body like Mars or icy moons, that's a good place to start looking for life. And on Mars, that could be ancient riverbeds, ancient oceans. It could even be present day liquid water. But is it the case that where there is liquid water, there, all, there is always going to be life? Could we imagine water bodies in our solar system or elsewhere where we find liquid water, but no evidence for life within those uh, water bodies? Well, it turns out that you can find examples of that here on Earth, in fact, in your kitchen. So right here, I have a bottle of honey and honey very rarely gets contaminated. You may have noticed this, that very rarely does it get moldy. And I don't know whether you've ever wondered why, that, why that's the case, but it is interesting because honey contains liquid water. It's a nice liquid material that you can see here. It has water in it. So surely if there's water in there, there should be life. And yet this material rarely gets moldy. And it's also true with some types of jams as well. Very strong sugary jams uh, tend to get sometimes a mold on the surface but generally not inside the jam. Why is that the case? Well, the reason is that although this has liquid water in, the water molecules are bound up in this material and are not really available to life. And we can measure that with a measurement called the water activity. And water activity is a way of measuring, if you like, the availability of water. It's formally actually stated as the vapor pressure above a liquid of interest, which could be the honey divided by the vapor pressure of liquid water, pure water. And it leads to a water activity scale of zero to one. So zero is no water at all. One is distilled water. And our honey here has a water activity of about 0.5. Now it turns out that life biology has a minimum water activity level below which even if there's liquid water, it can't get access to those water molecules. For all intents and purposes, the material is completely dry. And that lower limit is about 0.6. So anything above 0.6 means that there's enough liquid water for life to be able to get those molecules and grow and reproduce. So our honey here at about 0.5 is below the water activity limit for life. And that explains why even though there's liquid water in there, uh, nothing can grow in it. It remains free of uh, mold and other contaminating microbes. So that's the first thing to recognize. Is there is a lower water activity limit for life below which it cannot go. And it turns out there are natural environments where the water activity is below that critical threshold for life. If you go to the Mediterranean Sea and you go deep into the Mediterranean, you can find salty water in the bottom of that sea that contains magnesium chloride. And magnesium chloride brines happen to have a very low water activity. It's just the, the nature of those magnesium and chloride ions. When you mix them in water, a high concentration, you end up with water activities down at sort of 0 0.3, 0 0.4 around there, which is below the water activity limit for life. So there in the natural environment 
on the earth, you can find brine, salty water that is at a too low water activity for life. And there's no evidence for actively growing microbes in that material as far as we know. So here on the earth, we can find water bodies that are liquid water but contain no life. So we should follow the water on other planetary bodies, but it's not necessarily the case that just because there was liquid water, there was life. Another environment where we can find these uh, strange brines is actually closer to home here in the UK. In Yorkshire, there is a mine called the Bulby Mine, which is an active polyhalite mine uh, up there near Whitby. If you go down to that mine, you can find water seeping through ancient salt, 250 million year old Permian salt deposits that were laid down in a giant sea called the Zechstein Sea that covered most of Europe. And today, liquid water channels through those ancient salts and dissolves the salt. And some of those salts are like uh, table salts, sodium chloride. And when they dissolve water, we end up with a liquid with a water activity of about 0.75, which is above that critical threshold and things can grow in there. But in some of those briny solutions, the salts contain those magnesium and chloride ions and the water activity plummets and we end up with a brine that's got a water activity of about 0.4 and we don't find any life in those brines at all. They seem to be completely lifeless. And what's fascinating about that is it shows that, that water dribbling through those ancient salt deposits, it just has to take one little wrong path through a particular type of salt and suddenly the water activity is below the critical threshold and it is uninhabitable, even though it contains liquid water. In other environments like the Dalar Rift in Africa, where you've got bubbling uh, hot springs, where the, um, where the continent is rifting apart, we can find environments that are so extreme uh, that the combined extremities of things like acid and salts and high concentrations of ions creates liquid water environments that seem to be devoid of life. So even on our own planet, we certainly can find natural environments that have lots of liquid water, but that liquid water is essentially unavailable. The molecules are unavailable to life. We find no evidence for living things. And that raises the interesting question of whether in fact outer space might be full of environments that contain liquid water, but where the iron concentrations or other things in the water prevent biology, if it was ever there, from taking advantage of that water. So for example, on Mars, we could imagine water beneath the surface that's full of perchlorate ions or magnesium and chloride ions where the liquid water is there for sure but it's so salty and briny that life could never grow in it even if it was on that planet. Uh, the icy moons of the solar system like the moons around Jupiter and Saturn uh, maybe they contain liquid water oceans that are uninhabitable. At the moment we've got no evidence they're uninhabitable in fact the water coming out of Enceladus, Saturn's moon, seems to be really quite habitable and quite suitable for life. But who knows about Europa and other uh, briny uh, oceans beneath other planetary bodies? Uh, for example, Ceres, the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, seems to have salty, briny water beneath its surface. What is the chemical composition of that brine? Uh, does it contain life? Or could it have all the wrong ions? Even though there's liquid water there, it's not suitable for life because like our honey here, the water is actually not available for life. So this is a rather a fascinating area of astrobiology, the question of liquid water and whether it's available to biology. One should also note that of course, there is liquid water at temperatures that far exceed the upper known limits for life at the moment. For example, if we pressurize water, we can get liquid water well above the boiling point at 100 degrees. Uh, the currently known limit for life is 122 degrees, and that limit may go up as we explore more high temperature environments on the Earth. But it's quite possible that even just beneath the surface of the Earth, in the crust of the Earth, where water is pressurized to maybe 160, 170 degrees, we could have in those locations liquid water that is too hot for life. So there, life is limited not by the availability of the water molecules, uh, like our honey here, but is limited by the high temperature of that water that disrupts biological molecules. So there are different ways in which we can find or possibly find liquid water, but without uh, the conditions for life. And as we explore the universe and go out into the solar system, follow the water is a good idea. The planetary scientists have got that right. At least with life as we know, we should look for liquid water first, but we should not be under any illusion about the idea that liquid water doesn't necessarily 
demonstrate the presence of life, even if it had originated on a planet, we might find many water bodies are not suitable for that life to live in those habitats. So where there is water, there is life, not necessarily. Thanks a lot for joining me. Look after yourselves.